So in this episode, we're going to be taking our character here, which currently has the ability to run, and we're going to be giving it the ability to sprint. And by using uh, exposing our parameters for our animations, we're going to be making our animation play twice as fast while it's moving twice as fast. So now we're walking and now we're sprinting. And this can be used for many different kinds of animation states and functions, uh, but this is just a very simple way of showing how that can be done. In addition to that, we also are going to be setting up, so we see here we have one attack on one key and another attack on another key, yet in the animation blueprint they are making use of the same state. They're, it's essentially just one simple state that they're both going through, again by exposing and leveraging these variables to change dynamically while we are in runtime. A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos, or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from. Enough about how awesome you are, back to the video. Welcome back. In this episode we are going to be checking out how you can leverage uh, dynamically changing animations in Paper ZD to get some different uh, results. So to get started. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be, first of all, uh, let's actually create an animation. For now we have, just so you're on, on board here with what we actually have in place. So in this case I have a, we open up the animation blueprint uh, here. So uh, this is the only part you need to really consider. Everything else here is fluff that doesn't really concern us today. Uh, so for now we have an idle state and a running state, right? And what we want to make use of is uh, a running state here. We want our running state to, let's say we had a sprint functionality in our game. So when we play now, we're currently running around. Uh, this character is set to have 300 in movement speed. And uh, let's say we wanted to make the character able to sprint. Uh, by doubling its movement speed. So, what we can do is, if we just increase the movement speed, it's going to be playing the animation at the same rate, which means it will look sort of like it's floating or skipping very large distances. If we wanted to, we could actually have the play rate uh, increase as well. So, uh, let's see how we can do that. Um, in our uh, character. We want to create uh, an event for uh, starting to sprint. So we can set up a uh, uh, an event for this. So we'll go to uh, project settings and we'll go and set up some inputs and we'll set up a uh, there we go a sprint. And let's say we want to use the shift keys. So we'll click on the button and left shift. And that's all we need here. Uh, then we can go to our character and say when we press shift. No, sorry, not shift, sprint we called it. When we press sprint we want to start sprinting and when we are releasing we want to go back to normal essentially. So what we have is on our character movement here we have a max speed. You can see our max walk speed of 300. So if we wanted to we can say set max walk speed and have two of these. So we could go something like this. So when we press, we set one speed and when we release, we set another speed. And we could hard code this just... Now, this is not good uh, practice. We should not be doing this. This is merely to show off the functionality in Paper ZD. So the rest of the stuff will be sort of just to make it easier to uh, show that off. Essentially, uh, we're pressing pressed, we increase the max speed to 600, we release it, we go back to 300. So let's try that. Whoops, did I miss a... I think I did. Yes, I did. Missed that component. So now we can run around, we're still running normal speed, holding down shift. You can see that the character is now very quickly moving across this landscape. And it looks a little bit floaty when it does it. So, what can we do about this? Well. If we go to our character, uh, our animation blueprint, we have an idle and a running. And inside the running here, we have on this animation some checkboxes over here. And this is where we can dynamically drive our animations through param parameterizing. 
something like the word I said, at least. <clears throat> anyway, so here we can expose things by clicking these checkboxes, which you can also see when you hover over that it says expose. So if we were to expose the play rate here, for example, we have a play rate here now that we can have this animation be running as. So if we right click and promote the variable, we can say that this is going to be our run play rate, just so we know exactly what this is. Now, if we go to our character, we can now say that we want to have this specific uh, play rate increased. So uh, to do that, we need to get our animation blueprint. So we'll start off by getting our animation component from paperzd. And from here, we'll get our anim instance. Now, this will just be a regular anim instance of the type uh, paperzd anim instance object reference, uh, which means it doesn't know of our variable. So for our purposes here to reach that, we will we'll be doing a cast here. And again, most of the things that I do with the normal code today is not good practice. Uh, it's merely for us to uh, move this along so we can show off the functionality. So we cast this to an MVP character because that's what my animation blueprint is called. And we'll copy this so we have it for both of these. And we'll hook them up like so. So what we want to do here is we want to set the play rate, this play rate that we have in the animation instance and we want to set it so when we're sprinting, meaning we're holding down our shift key, we want it to be, let's say, twice as fast because we increase the speed by two, right? From 300 to 600. And the normal play rate is supposed to be one. So let's see what happens now. We run normally and then we run fast. And you can see our character is now animating twice as fast, which means that it looks better in the sense of the, the distance that it's traveling. And this will, of course, vary from animation to animation. But that is, in essence, how we can make use of uh, play rate, for example, to affect your animations for different things. And this is just a simple example. There are many other ways you can make use of this. Let's uh, check, it, check out a different way we can leverage our exposed uh, variables. So if we go to our animation blueprint again, and let's create a new state here. Let's say we wanted to make something like an attack. Uh, in this case here, we've done in a previous uh, uh, tutorial, we've done a jump node here where we get uh, an animation state for a light attack. But let's say we wanted to have a sort of unified... Um, uh, we didn't want to create a jump for each of the different attacks that we want to create. Uh, we want, don't want to mess up the animation blueprint that much. We could make use of a unified state which handles all our different attacks in one place. So what we're going to be doing here is, first of all, we're going to have our state. We're going to be calling this our uh, dynamic attack state. And from here, we're going to right click and choose a jump. We we'll call this our dynamic attack jump. So our dynamic attack jump will be the entry point when we start doing an attack, which will go to our dynamic attack um, state, which will then go back to idle once it is done. So that's all that this uh, functionality is going to be doing. For now, we can go in here and we can say, in my case, I have among my animation sources, I have uh, an attack one, an attack two, and an attack three. So uh, let's take a play attack one to begin with and have that as our input over here. Like so. From here, we want to, uh, we don't want to loop this animation. We want this to be like a one shot kind of animation. Uh, so we'll go back and then we'll say here in the transition back to idle, we'll say that uh, time remaining for attack one is equal to zero. Need to change my language, sorry. Like so, there we go. So we want to say that um, when it's equal to zero, no time remaining, it has played animation, then we're done, then we transition back to idle. So let's create a function now for this so we can actually transition there. Um, so for this 
we will choose a very simple key. In my case, I have a bunch of different keys uh, unavailable. If you go to product settings and input, you can see here I'm using one, E, two, D, A, and stuff like that. So uh, for this, we're just going to be creating a key for uh, key five. We're gonna say that that is going to be one of our attacks and we're gonna say uh, key six is going to be our other attack, for example. From this, we want to jump to our animation. And how that is done is something we have done before in, in our tutorials. We want to get the animation component in our anim instance, and we want to say we want to jump to a node. So let's do that. Here we go. So animation component, get our anim instance again. And we don't need to cast this. And we'll just say, uh, jump to node. And then we'll create another one over here for a little bit later. For now, we're going to leave it like so. So uh, the name of the node is going to be, of course, what we named the node over here. So we're going to take that name. And we'll plug that in in both of these. Uh, in this case, I also have multiple um, animation state machines. So I'm going to be having to get this name which is not a very great name. If you just have one anim, anim, uh, one state machine, you won't be needing to enter a name here, but for me, I need to do this to show off which node I'm actually meaning. Uh, so now if we press the five key, we should be jumping to the dynamic attack, which will lead us over, that's not where we want to go, here. So our dynamic attack, which will play in this case a hard-coded uh, uh, animation that we have, and then when it's done, it should transition back to idle. So let's check this out and see if this works. So press the key, it does the attack, and it goes back to idle. Everything is working fine so far. So now is the part where we're actually going to be doing some dynamic changing. So inside here, we can go back to our animation, and we can say uh, we want to expose our anime sequence instead. So our anim sequence currently is attack one here, but we can right click, promote this to a variable and say uh, attack sequence animation or something like that. So now we have a variable here that we can make use of if we wanted to. So when we're doing these attacks now and jumping to these nodes, uh, when this node is uh, being called, it's going to check this variable to see which animation it will be playing uh, in the state machine here. So we can actually leverage this in our code here. Now we need to cast because we need to reach the specific variable here. So uh, animbp character, we're going to copy and paste that so we have it available here. And from here, we actually want to do this. We want to drag out from here. We want to set animation sequence, attack sequence animations, what we called it. Like so. Hook it up like so. So this means we're grabbing our anime instance. We're casting it to make sure that we have the correct one. We're setting the variable inside of it. And we're going to be setting this one to attack one in this case, and then we're saying jump to the node. So let's see if this still works. It doesn't work because this one is not hooked up. So let's unhook it and let's try again. So pressing five, nothing is happening. Okay, so what's going on here? Uh, let's check. So in our animation, uh, our state machine, we have our transition here from our state to our idle which is currently being run from our time remaining of attack one. However, if we change to attack two, then this is no longer checking against the same um, sequence. So what we need to do here is instead uh, get use of our player, although this functionality might change later in Papers ID, but in the version that I'm using currently, this is how it works. Uh, from here, we need to get our playback progress. Uh, the, the drawback with this is that the player here will check the previous frame instead of the, the current frame, like this one does. As such, we need to do slightly different here. We are going to be saying if the progress here is greater or equal, let's say. Actually, let's just use e greater than. 
uh, like so. And here is a ratio, so between zero and one, so we can say 0 0.95 essentially being essentially done. We can say if this is true, then we want to transition. So let's check this. We go out, we press play, we press our attack key, and we're doing our attack and going back to idle again. Now, let's see if we can expand upon this then. So we have our six key here, which is going to be using the same component here to cast. It's going to be setting an animation in the blueprint. It's going to be setting attack, let's say two in this case. And then it's going to be jumping to the same node here. Let's see what happens. So we press the five key, we do an attack. We press six key, we do a different attack. So you can see uh, we can make use of the same flow here, for example, to make use of multiple animations being played uh, by exposing it, in this case, over here. And this, of course, works for start position and looping animation as well, if you want to do some more advanced things uh, above this. But at least now you have a couple of examples of how this can be used uh, for your different projects. And now you can just uh, start imagining what, what other kind of purposes you can make use of it for. Anyway, I hope that was useful. That's going to be all for now. Keep on learning. Take care. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.